Commission Chair Ellen Weintraub joins us now in a CNBC exclusive. Chair Weintraub, thanks for being here. In terms of this op-ed, break this down for us. What is micro-targeting and why is that the heart of the problem? Micro-targeting is when you get an individual ad in your feed that is designed based on all the analytics that the platforms have available to them, all that data that they gather about you that allows advertisers to target the ad to your exact susceptibilities. And the problem with that is that then it's the equivalent of having somebody whispering in the ear of a million different voters a slightly different message targeted just for them, and there's no audience. There's no one there to counteract that message if there's something wrong with it or if there's another point of view. What we want under the First Amendment is to inspire the most robust debate, the wide open, robust debate about the issues that can only happen when you've got a give and take. And this micro-targeting obliterates that possibility because only one message is being heard and no one else knows what's being said. Although Facebook would respond that every political ad will be viewable by anyone, why is that not a sufficient fix? Well, I mean, if you go to their, um, they've got an archive somewhere and you have to sort through a billion different ads and how are you going to find the exact one that goes to that voter, you're not going to have the kind of data that you need and, and it's not going to be accessible enough to promote the kind of debate that we want to see in our politics. Chair Weintraub, are, we, are you arguing that we should create a standard for digital ads that's different from other types of ads or real life? Because it seems to me that, in a way, visiting black churches and, and singing the hymns or kissing babies at the county fair is a way of micro-targeting an audience, so, so is going door-to-door -door in certain neighborhoods. Isn't this the digital equivalent that we're seeing happening to some degree with micro-targeting? Well, none of this would have anything to do with any candidate's ability to go door to door. That I suppose that's the closest analogy is when you're going door to door. But most other advertising takes place on a much broader platform where other people can see it. If you give a speech at a fair, there are a lot of people listening. If you're running an ad on a on a news in a newspaper or on a local network, a lot of other people will see it. And it, so what we've got here is a scale that just doesn't take place anywhere else. This is what the digital media allows. There's only so many doors you can knock on, but what the digital platforms create is the possibility to whisper in millions of different ears at the same time. And that's what's so different about this. And I'm not advocating for anybody taking down their ads. You know, all this started uh, out of a debate over whether political ads should be allowed at all on the platforms. I think that's a good thing. Use the platforms to get your information out, but let somebody else see what you have to say. Don't be afraid to engage in the kind of debate that would allow both sides of the issue to be aired out. So given that fact, is Twitter making a mistake right now? Is this a misstep to just pull political advertising altogether? That's really up to them to decide what kind of advertising they want to allow. It's my understanding that Twitter didn't have a lot of political advertising, so it's not clear that it's going to really diminish a whole lot of debate that's going on by that decision. And, you know, there are differences in the different platforms. Maybe there's something about the platform on Twitter and the small number of characters that made them feel more comfortable doing that way. There was starting to be pressure built as a result of that decision on other platforms, though. And what I wanted to suggest is that there's another way. And by the way, I'm not suggesting that we do this by government regulation. This is a friendly suggestion that the platforms step up and do something good for democracy. Make sure that they are encouraging the kind of debate that will really be helpful to the voters and create a more informed citizenry. Advertising aside, you know, we live in a country, Chair Weintraub, where our tech companies are the best innovators in the world. They can create products that no one could have ever imagined. Are we going to be hearing a renewed push next year uh, for them to somehow wade in and make the process of voting and counting votes more secure and more easy? Well, we don't vote electronically, and that's because I think a lot of people are concerned that it can't be 100 percent secured if we were to go to e-voting. So, you know, that, that's an entirely separate issue. What we're talking about here is how people's messages get out and what kind of debate we can have. You know, going back as far as Louis Brandeis, the Supreme Court has endorsed the notion that sunshine is the best disinfectant. So rather than having this private form of advertising, let your message be heard by a lot of people. Engage with the public and hear what other people have to say about it. So, Chair Weintraub, have you actually engaged with the tech companies about this discussion and this op-ed? Lost the volume. 
Uh, have you engaged with the tech companies about micro-targeting, about this discussion that's in your op-ed? Not yet, but I'm happy to talk to them about it.